Hi there, it's Mimsy here. So today is going to be a three year update on my epoxy countertops. I've been living with these countertops for a little more than three years. I put them in Thanksgiving, right before Thanksgiving, three years. So today I'm gonna show you some close ups of my countertops and I'm gonna answer the most frequently asked question. Do they yellow? Do they stain and scratch? What kind of epoxy do I use? Are they heat safe? Are they food safe? How much epoxy do I need? How much time between coats? Do you apply a clear coat when you're finished? What colors did I use? So I'm gonna answer all these questions and more. So let's get started. Started. For my countertops, the base coat of my countertops are a color by Bear that I bought at Home Depot and it's called Swan Wing. That's the base coat that I painted onto my MDF and then I poured my epoxy on clear. This color here that I used for my veining is called French Beige and that's by Rust-Oleum and I'll link to that in the description box below. So I get the question all the time do my countertops stain and scratch so first of all staining I have had many stains I've been able to get most of them out very easily just using Windex I have one stain over by my sink and I'll show you that and that stain I don't know what it is it's a ring and I don't I don't know what that is and uh, I haven't been able to get that out the only other thing that's difficult to get out is when you get raw turmeric powder on your countertops my husband uses turmeric powder in and makes drinks and smoothies with it and uh, when that is mixed with water and sits on the countertop it's difficult to get out but I'll show you after three years I only have one stain that's permanent and I can't get out and let me show you where that's at so here's the one and only stain on my countertops and that's this ring right here and I don't know what it is it was not coffee I have no idea what that is but that's the one and only stain and really in the grand scheme of things I barely nobody really know nobody would notice it except for me the only other staining that I have is actually not in the epoxy it is in the silicone grout in between here and that is from coffee my coffee maker is there and there have been plenty of mornings I've gotten up and there's coffee all filling this countertop and sitting in that silicone and I have not cleaned it when I bleach that it does come out pretty well but that's the only staining now as far as scratches I would say that this countertop scratches let me see if I can focus in okay I'm gonna darken it up oh, hang on my stove I'm making a finished pancake let's see if it's done oh yeah it looks good Perfect. So as far as scratches go, I'm gonna show you on my dark countertop, my island countertop, because it's easier to see the scratches on this. And I would say it scratches very similar to Formica as far as you get just really, really fine scratching in the surface. The thing is, is that because the surface is so, so glossy, you can, you can see it a little bit more than in Formica, which is generally a matte finish. So there is definitely scratching, but I would say it's pretty minor. This countertop, um, you can see it a little bit more because it's the darker finish. Uh, one more thing I want to show you here, going to the question as far as do you seal it with a coat of polyurethane or some sort of sealer? And my answer to that is no, I did not seal mine. And I think that it's not a good idea. I'll show you this corner here. So this corner here, this area right here is the area that I sanded it down with a 400 or 600 grit sandpaper because I wanted to see what the matte finish looked like. This stuff right here is where I used a dead matte polyurethane on it because I thought, well, let me try that and see how that looks and maybe I'll just paint that over instead of sanding this whole thing. As you can see, it did not last and it basically just scratches off of here. And this is a very high quality matte polyurethane sealer by Modern Masters and it did not stick. It, it's just, it just comes right up, look at that. So I would not suggest putting a polyurethane type of sealer on top of your epoxy, just leave it as is. If you want a matte finish, then I would suggest sanding it down to a matte finish. It's buttery, 
velvety and really nice and I may actually do that. Okay, as for what type of epoxy do I use? I've used all kinds. So I've used Total Boat Epoxy quite a bit. They sponsored a few of my projects. They sponsored my island countertop as well as a table, my ping pong table they sponsored by giving me free epoxy. I've used Total Boat. I think it's a great product. I have also used a local company called McKinnon Materials and I have linked to that in a few of my videos. They have not sponsored me, but they have a good quality product and their prices are really, really reasonable. It's delicious. Those are the two epoxies I've used. I feel like I've used another one. Anyway, I, I don't know. I've used these two. This is what I use for this side. The Total Boat is what I use for my island. Anyway, when I went to McKinnon Materials, I've talked to the owner of McKinnon Materials and he's been in the business for 40 years or more and he claims that there is only three or four manufacturers of epoxy in the United States or I don't know. Anyway, he says that all epoxy comes from one of these four factory epoxy manufacturers and so therefore they're all the same. So. I don't know. I've used them both. I don't really see any difference in them. They all seem to be about the same. Are they heat safe and are they food safe? The food safe, I don't have an answer to that. I do not cut on my countertops anything. I use a cutting board for everything. Um, I've even, I have even rolled out dough on my countertops. Maybe that's not a good idea, but I didn't seal them with anything and they do say no VOCs in them. I don't know. Um, but I, they can't be any less safe than cooking in an aluminum pan or using aluminum foil or putting uh, plastic wrap over your food in the microwave. I don't know. That's, that's a question I cannot answer. As far as heat safe, after 30 days, they're completely heat safe. I dumped my pasta out on, in my sink and I set my hot pots right on the epoxy and they're completely fine. Before the 30 days, I wouldn't even set a hot cup of coffee on the countertops because I did that once before the 30 days and it left a raised ring because of the heat. So before 30 days, don't set anything on it. After 30 days, you're good to go. Set anything on it. I've set, taken things right off the stove and set it right on my countertop and it was fine. How much time between coats? Most of the manufacturers will tell you on the back of their container how much time between coats. I think that it's pretty standard that you need to wait at least four hours but not more than six hours before your second coat if you want to do the second coat without having to sand. If you wait more than six hours then you've got to sand your epoxy in order to give it a little bit of tooth so that the second coat will grip. And then the biggest question that everybody asks is do they turn yellow? And the short answer is yes they turn yellow. But the key to the least yellowing is to put it on in a very thin coat. And I'll tell you how I learned that. Let me show you down here. So this run of my countertops is 22 feet long. So clearly I had to join some MDF on my countertops, but join it. So what I did right here, this is where the join is. And what I did is I pocket hole screwed these two halves together and then they're sitting on top of my ca kitchen cabinets. However, my kitchen cabinets are really uh, jank. The, the, these cabinets here are file cabinets and then I didn't have a cabinet over here. So anyway, this join right here was not completely level. So what I did is I filled, actually what I did is I sanded this join here so that it would be flat. Well, I didn't do a great job of that and I don't know if it settled or if I just didn't realize it was not flat and this side is higher. So when I poured the epoxy, the epoxy was thicker than this side. So this side yellowed. And this I didn't and let me show you that and I know this because when I use polyurethane and I used polyurethane on my floor in my workroom in the areas where the polyurethane kind of pooled and was thicker on the floor it turned yellow so this is the same chemical reaction whatever it is in the epoxy it's the same thing in the polyurethane and it yellows so let me show you the countertop here is the join 
you can see that it's actually like there's actually a bump there so let me bring you back okay now in this area you can clearly see this side is more yellow than this side and it is definitely because the epoxy was thicker here the countertop came here and then it kind of bumps up which is very difficult to see so can you see that definite line so that's how I know that if you want your epoxy to yellow as little as possible, put it on as thin as possible. So I would suggest... So that's why I would definitely suggest using a notched trowel for spreading out your epoxy because that will guarantee that all of your epoxy is going to be an eighth of an inch thick or whatever your, your notches are. And just make sure that your whole countertop is very level. So use a level, you know, move it around and see if you've got any low points or concave points because if there are any the epoxy will definitely settle thicker there and you will see yellowing more in those areas and I noticed it on my backsplash as well that there's spots on my backsplash that are more yellow than others like right next to my sink and that's definitely because I didn't when I put I had the backsplashes on sawhorses I didn't even level them up it was in my garage because I didn't even I didn't even think about it when I was doing the backsplash and so they were definitely not level and the epoxy will just flow to the lowest point and will a lot oftentimes not just flow off the end if it's real square and I'll show you over there and it'll just kind of get pool up on that end and get thicker and that's why it will yellow so make sure that your epoxy is as thin as possible do two do uh, two coats thin each time so you see my backsplash there behind the soap dish that parts really white and that part has turned yellow on the left of that seam that's a seam right there where two pieces of backsplash were joined together and you can see the one on the left was clearly thicker and it's more yellow and it's really way more apparent in this video than in in person if you have any other questions about epoxy before you embark on your project just leave them in the comments below and I will definitely answer your questions um, and potentially make a video uh, about it. If I get a lot of the same question, I can definitely answer that in a video. If you're gonna do an epoxy project, this video here is a great starting point.